All right, guys, thanks for showing up. Um, yeah, so Chris is introduced. I don't have to waste any time with that. Just really quick about myself. I'm a software engineer at the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory. I work in a group that works primarily on building data management systems for NASA missions, for research missions. Um, and so I'm also involved in the Apache Software Foundation in a couple of different ways. And what I'm going to be talking about today is two different Apache technologies, Apache OODT and Apache Solar. Um, if you've been here most of the day, you've heard a lot about ODT. I'm not going to be covering so much of this background of it, um, but I will be talking mostly about how these two projects and technologies can be combined and which, in, in which ways they complement each other. And then just towards the end, I'll just show an example of how we've done this on some of our projects to, in a deployment scenario. And then I'll just leave you with uh, some different ways to participate for each of the groups. Um, so Apache OODT, for anybody who wasn't here earlier, is a acronym for Object-Oriented Data Technology. It's a software package which consists of loosely connected components um, for data management and for building data systems that has its origin in NASA mission data systems. Um, and so it has different components which can be configured in all kinds of different ways to do things like information integration, pulling, pulling information from lots of different places and making it seem like one big archive, um, data cataloging and archiving. Uh, if you're a mission flying a 10-year um, flight and you want to have the sum total of your data assets available, this is a software that can help you build up these large-scale archives. Um, and configurable, configurable workflow processing to essentially do tasks on your data and transform it in, in different ways. So, uh, Apache came to OD, or, sorry, ODT came to Apache in 2011 after an incubation period. We've currently grown up to about 29 committers, and our latest release was last December, which is our, our fifth release here. So ODT is currently in use in a number of diverse locations. One example is the Karoo Array Telescope, which is a precursor instrument um, for the uh, Square Kilometer Array Telescope, which is, when, it, when, it, when it's constructed, will be the largest radio telescope in the world by several orders of magnitude. Um, it's also in use in the Virtual Pediatric Intensive Care Unit at Children's Hospital Los Angeles, where it's being used to build up a data repository used to identify clusters of patients with similarities to help improve um, diagnoses. And it's also being used in a place called the Regional Climate Model Evaluation System, which is an effort at JPL to help bring uh, better use of NASA's remote sensing data to the people doing regional climate modeling. So these systems tend to be scientific in nature, which is sort of true to ODT's roots. Um, they share the fact that there's lots of data that needs to be processed. There's often um, a set of processing steps that are very well defined and algorithms. And so part of this is generating these archives of data. And the corollary to that is that search of these archives is ultimately important. Um, I, some of the strengths of ODT have been covered before, so I'll just go really quickly through this. But ODT is a framework, a component framework, but you are in no way obligated to use all of it. Um, it can be taken piecemeal and inserted if you already have a pre-existing system that does workflow processing and you really just need some sort of file management tool. You can take that component of ODT. Or if you have all of that and you really just want a way to get files, you can use the crawler and the push-pull components um, independently of a bigger system. Or you can string them together in any number of configurations to get um, a complete end-to-end -end data system. So. Apache Solar, the other project I'm going to talk about, it provides uh, search based on Lucene and web services. And it has some really powerful features. Uh, it's really excellent because it has these flexible formats and it's extremely configurable. Um, it's in use in a large, large number of places, including through its integration with Drupal on the White House search. It does the, um, it powers the search for that. It powers the search for Netflix. Um, and it's also in use in the NASA planetary data system. So why would we think about bringing these two technologies together? Um, I think basically what I was saying earlier about if you have large archives of data, it's almost always important to be able to search them. And ODT doesn't natively provide that capability. Um, but solar is ex excellent at that. Um, both of these projects are Java-based projects, so their code base um, you know, to a from a developer's perspective would look familiar. 
Um, and they both uh, share the fact that they do most of their configuration through XML. So if, if we were to look at like a sample integration and take this with a grain of salt, this would be one high level diagram of a standard data archive pipeline. If you're going all the way from the left, you've got the acquisition phase where you're doing some number of processing to get data from one or many upstream sources. You can use uh, some ODT components, you can use existing processes, but the end result of that is that you've got the data in some sort of staging area. After that, it's generally a process of getting it from the staging area into an ingestion, which usually involves extracting metadata or information about the data so that you can basically create a metadata catalog that represents or allows somebody to understand what are the contents of your archive. And that metadata could be something as simple as like parsing the file name, or it could be something like using Apache Tika to understand the contents of the file and basically look at the metadata inside it, or as is often the case with us, we're using um, standard uh, scientific file formats like NetCDF and HDF5, which have very well-defined metadata standards, and so we have parsers that will read those and then extract the metadata that way. But the third step then is having, having um, obtained the data and having extracted the meta information from the file to build up this, uh, both a, the metadata catalog and the data archive. And so ODT provides tools, namely the ODT file manager, to make this process very self-contained, um, as well as a number of flexible configurations for it, like how you want to lay the files out on disk, what type of backend you'd like to use for your um, metadata catalog. The default is Apache Lucene, but there have been implementations that have used a relational database, um, and there's other smaller experimental things which aren't part of, um, part of the ODT themselves, but are sort of done by the projects that are using ODT. And then the last phase, let's just say, is distribution. Ultimately, you want to be able to get the products that you've uh, archived out to people, and there are a couple of different ODT components that you can use to do the distribution. Um, but what you don't see here is any ideal way to search this, these archives. And so this would be one example of a strategy for integrating ODT and solar. At the point um, in which you are ingesting files from the staging area into the um, catalog, if you create a junction at that point and dump the metadata both into the OODT file manager and into the solar catalog, at that point then you've got a, you, you're able to leverage solar's native capability for doing really advanced search, uh, faceting, um, dynamically collecting and, and searching and querying on different metadata keys. All of that tough stuff becomes available to you. And if you happen to include the, oh, the, the file manager's uh, product URL in your solar metadata, then you almost create a loop in the sense that somebody who does a query for solar will get the raw URL to be able to pull the product from, from ODT. So this is, this is one way that you can integrate. So when I say products, I, I know I've been saying this, that you can think of it generally as a one-to-one -one mapping between files. ODT doesn't require that. There are, there are plenty of instances in which ODT product is, re is actually a directory of files. But in general, we think of one product as one file. Each one of these things has a globally unique ID, um, but ODT also has the concept of a higher level collection of files. And so when I was talking about metadata, ODT has a very simple metadata model which informs and is shared by all of the ODT components. And in fact, it's used as a sort of way to persist state across um, the ODT components as, as data passes through the system. Um, it's just key val, or in some cases, key multi-val. And there's generally two types of metadata. There's uh, system metadata, which is stuff that is appended to the record of the, of the file as it traverses through uh, ODT components. Relationships between data, um, we were talking, Chris mentioned the PCS components, they have this ability to track provenance. And so as a file is generated by a workflow step, the inputs to that step are recorded and the outputs to that step are recorded in the metadata for that file so that you can literally trace all the way back up the pedigree tree through the workflow steps. What was used to generate this file and what is this file used in generating? So that type of thing is system metadata. User metadata, on the other hand, is something that is specified by the person building the data system and it's, it's what we call a policy. And it can be at the level of the product itself 
which is metadata that would change on a per file basis. You could think of a file name as being product metadata or product type metadata, which is stuff that wouldn't change across all of the files in that particular collection. Something like that would be maybe the, um, the, the file type, for example. Um, and again, it's just used to extract information and get associated with individual products as they are ingested. Um, so I can show you just briefly what that looks like. I was saying earlier that ODT represents its, its configuration in XML. And so what you're looking at here is um, an XML file that basically represents part of the ODT policy. If you define um, a product type, you're basically providing just a little bit of information to the ODT file manager. Um, the product type metadata, that metadata common to all files is specified as a set of key valves. You also specify the way in which you expect to extract metadata from the file. So you have the ODT as a concept of a met extractor and you can provide both the class that you'd like to use to do the extraction and any real um, configuration to that thing at that point. So that's a basic idea of, of how to define a product type or a collection of products. The elements itself are both, um, they're very simple descriptions. You can provide additional information, but they basically, each one has a unique ID, a URN, and a general description of what does this metadata mean. This could be file name, file location, that type of thing. Um, so that's ODT's idea of metadata. Solar uh, configuration is done also through XML, but it's usually, um, Solar's idea is the concept of fields, fields that will get indexed, fields that will become part of what you can query. Um, and the, the solar schema essentially allows you to provide a great deal of information about each of these fields, including what data type it should treat it as. Is it a date? Is it a number? Is it a string? Is it a special kind of string? Um, it's actually quite flexible. So I will show you an example of the solar schema that we're using. Um, in one of our projects. This is probably a little big. Um, so this actually is the solar schema for the project that was described in the previous talk, um, the LabCAS project. And you'll notice that each of these field definitions has a name, a type, whether or not that thing should be indexed, whether or not the data should be stored, and if it's single or multi-valued. Um, there's additional tricks that you can do, which the solar documentation is actually pretty excellent at for describing. But in general, you must declare up front everything that you'd like to be able to query on later. This is the way that, this is the way that you express that. So if you've got a definition in ODT of what your data looks like in ODT, and you've got an <coughs> idea of what you want to search for in solar, um, the next question is, how do you make the connection between these two software packages? So OODT introduced this thing called the Solar Indexer tool, and it's a piece of the file manager um, component, and it is a software that basically takes the ODT metadata definitions and the solar schema and allows you to dump the contents of your ODT metadata catalog into solar so that it can then be queried. And it's important to note, perhaps, that we're only talking about metadata. The transfer of information from ODT to solar is not the data of the file but just the information about the contents of your archive. So the, uh, this is, that's the uh, class path if you were interested in like digging into the ODT source code to where you will find the uh, solar indexer. It became available in 04, um, got a lot more use sort of towards the end of last year and has had a couple of improvements. So if you're gonna check it out, I recommend using at least the version released in 05 um, and preferably the trunk at the moment. Um, and it offers a several different modes of operation for getting data between ODT and solar. If you were to run this from the command line, it would give you a set of options. I'm going to go through some of the more common ones because this is, a, but this is just an example of what you'd get if you ran it with no options. Um, so one thing that is common is, okay, so I've got an ODT file manager, lots and lots of products, lots of different product types. I'd like to take all of the products from one type and, make, and put them into solar so that I can query against them and find out what I have. This is the Java command you might run from the, com from the command line. Um, and you can see it's got a several points. You, you specify a configuration for the, for the indexer tool, uh, the path to the, to the OODT file manager uh, jars, 
And then um, in this case, we're going to, yeah, we're going to just use dash dash all because we'd like to get all of the products that are in the file manager into solar and then simply providing both URLs to, to each service. It will then go ahead and do the ingestion. If instead you wanted to get just the products from a specific product type, you would change all to specify that specific product type. Each product type in its metadata has a URN which uniquely defines it. And specifying it here will cause the tool to only uh, pay attention to files that are products that belong to that product type. Um, if you wanted to ingest a single product by its unique product ID, that's also supported. Um, optionally, it is also possible to tell the tool to drop any prior existing records for that for that tool before doing the index. So sometimes sometimes you don't want that. Sometimes you want records to append, but if you want to keep at most one per product, using the delete flag is important. So these two. Um, These two use cases are, are pretty common in the sense that when you're first creating your index, you're almost always going to want to just get everything in because it's the first time the solar instance is empty. You want to just get everything in for a certain product type. But then keeping things up to date as new products come in, th this mode of operation where you're ingesting a single product at a time is very useful because if you can think back to that map where there's that juncture, as a product is coming across and its new product ID is generated, then you can just hook into this tool and say, look, copy the metadata for this product ID into solar, and that way you can keep the two catalogs in sync. So the, each, of, each of the above also has this indexer config as its first parameter, which is a way to specify some properties about how to do the transfer of information, how to, uh, how to afford the mapping between ODT and solar, and any features that, that you might want to add. And so I will give you an example of what that looks like Again, it's an XML config file um, with a relatively straightforward uh, syntax. The first thing you'll see there is that you're specifying the path to the file manager instance. You are, um, in case you have a non-standard way to access information about a particular product, you can specify the URL that it should use. Otherwise, it will just default to the out-of-the-box way that the file manager does things. Um, You'll see here at some point there's all of these fields which are just specified as what fields you're going to map. If it's not in this file, it's not going to be moved over to solar regardless of what the solar schema has. Likewise, if the solar schema doesn't have something that you do have in here, it's not going to get indexed because solar won't pay attention to it. And so keeping these two um, categories in sync, the, the mapping um, in the indexer.properties file and the field definitions in the schema, in the solar schema, that's an important thing to keep in mind. Um, as you can also, as you see down here at the bottom, you can specify specific things that are just hints that can be provided to solar to help with the transfer of data. Okay, so. Now we've got a sense of all of the basic parts Let's look at the use case. So the, what I was talking about earlier is really sort of use case one, right, which is building a searchable data archive. And most NASA missions tend to be this sort of thing where every day some instrument out there is collecting information and that information needs to be serially added to the archive. And once it's archived, it becomes part of the permanent collection. And there's almost never, in fact, it's almost enforced that nothing should ever change or perturb that because it's part of the official record. Um, so tends to be a one direction, products and metadata aren't mutable, and, but at the same time, we still want to give end users downstream the ability to understand what has been collected. And so that, again, is really this diagram, where data comes in from the instrument or the platform or the satellite or whatever it is, and it makes its way to the metadata catalog. And then for distribution purposes, we can put a solar catalog on top of it. And this is, the NASA planetary data system is more or less um, operated in this, in this manner. But there's a second use case, which is, you know, in some cases, you want to be able to interactively edit um, the metadata that was uh, captured. So what, if, but what about the case in which data came in at one point and s a certain amount was known about it at that point? but more becomes known or there's more input that pertains to the information and you want to be able to capture that and get it back in. 
And so your, your architecture diagram would look a little bit like this, and we, would, we, we can add another OODT service to the picture here. And the ODT provides a curator service, which is a, it, you can think of it as a web application, but it's really two distinct components, really. It's a set of Java, uh, JAXRS web services in the back end, and then a really thin HTML JavaScript front end. Um, and so there are people that take the curator as just a unit and use the front end and the back end. And there are also projects that will just install the web app and then take advantage only of the RESTful endpoints. But what you can do with this is the curator allows for the selective editing of existing metadata. And basically you can make changes to metadata in files that are already cataloged in the file manager component. And those changes will be persisted back into the metadata catalog. There's an issue with this picture, obviously, if you're do using solar for search. Um, this scenario doesn't provide for also updating the solar catalog. And so the sooner, as soon as you start making changes to the catalog, they're not immediately available in solar for the people that are doing searches. So there's a couple of options that we've taken into account for how to solve this. Um, you can either take it upon yourself to modify the ODT curator services. Um, and I'll go through a couple of ways to do that. Or you can treat the ODT curator as a black box, right, and sort of write services at a higher level that use, sort of as I was describing earlier, invoke the curator services to do the curator update, I'm sorry, to do the file manager update, and roll your own to keep the solar catalog in, in check as well. If you're gonna go down the route of modifying the curator services, um, as I mentioned, these are written in the JAXRS, which is the Java um, RESTful Services framework. And it's a really flexible framework and it uses, for those of you not familiar with it, it uses the concept of annotations above, above code blocks to help um, specify things like what route, what URL should map to this particular um, functionality and how the segments of that route should be interpreted as parameters to a function. Um, the Curator services, essentially, if you're gonna dig into the ODT trunk and you started at the trunk, that's the path you would use to get in town to the service layer. And on the second bullet there, the curator URL, if you make post and get requests to slash services metadata update, you have the ability to basically invoke these things either through the command line or through um, you know, user interfaces, web-based interfaces that you write that then target that. Um, so the there's, this, there's the concept of a servlet filter in Java, right, which intercepts both an incoming and outgoing um, request and response. And JAXRS has its own version of this, which is called a response handler. And so one way to modify the curator services without changing actual curator code is to write your own response handler that then intercepts the response to the metadata update. And the, contact, the, the content of your, your response handler could be just take whatever came in as a response and send it to solar as a solar document. So that's sort of what this picture looks like, right? I mean, you, you haven't, you've actually changed the curator REST services. While you haven't changed the code itself, you've changed the functionality by implementing a uh, filter in front of the response to one thing, which essentially creates a diversion to solar and helps to keep the two catalogs in sync. And as an example of where we've used this uh, at JPL, a project that I'm involved in involves capturing on a nightly basis um, radio astronomy observations from the uh, VLBA instrument, the Very Large Baseline Array instrument. And they're searching for these fast transient, which is sort of millisecond bursts of radio frequency from far out in the galaxy. And they use a set of um, AI algorithms to identify likely candidates because the data is tremendous and they're just interested in performing human review on things that are most likely um, interesting radio frequency events as opposed to people using their garage door opener. But when a, when a reviewer, the science team reviews these things on a nightly basis and when the reviewer is given an option, the ability to, to tag a particular event, they will look at this and they're really good. So they would sort of say within a second or two, that's RFI. I don't need that, or that's potentially interesting, or whatever. We give them the ability to tag each of these events as being potentially interesting. Well, behind the scenes, and this will get described in a talk tomorrow, actually, in, in a lot of detail, this particular system. 
But behind the scenes, at from a high level, what's happening is we've got basically that pipeline diagram that I was showing you where data is coming in, it's being archived, the metadata is being extracted, a catalog is being built, and solar is being populated so that we can search. But the editing portion of this is, after all of that has happened, reviewers come in and they say, they, they essentially assign a quality rating to some of this stuff, and that needs to be associated with the upstream uh, or with the original information. And so they tag something, and we have to persist that back to the metadata for that particular product. So in this project, we've taken the, the example of modifying the curator rest code to do that, to do that sync up. The other option that you have is to essentially treat the curator as a complete black box, not, not write any code to do that, to, to, to either intercept any of the services, but just treat it as a service. Um, and so we've, we've done this on, on other projects where you basically wrap the call to the uh, solar indexer tool. Um, the nice thing about it being a command line thing is that you're not um, limited, I, I don't know if it's a limit or not, but you're not restricted to um, writing all of your things in Java. If you prefer to call it from anything that can invoke the command line or from the command line itself, the solar indexer helps you bridge the gap between ODT and solar from uh, a very generic uh, platform. So the second case is basically where you develop your own service layer instead of the, um, the out of the box one where it basically, or sorry, you're treating the curator as a black box and you've got your own service layer that handles the, the persistence of that information so that both sides of these things keep up to date. Um, and we've actually done this on the project that was just described, the LabCAS project that was talked about in the prior, um, the prior instance. One of the things we had to do on this was if we have products in our ODT catalog, we wanted to be able to give users the ability to, over time, adjust the permissions of who might be able to see the, that product or who might be able to interact with that. And we had all of our permissions stored in an LDAP uh, server, and we wanted to therefore restrict who, the entries that people could select for each of these things from LDAP. So we wrote a service that essentially queried LDAP for the available list of groups and allowed us to basically write the selections, the user selections, to the metadata for each product. So, um, some of the things that can be learned from this are essentially that Solar and ODT do fit really well together. Um, there's, there's a good need because ODT has decided it's not going to be everything. It's going to focus on what it does best, which is data management. Solar is an outstanding tool for doing search, enterprise search, with really flexible interfaces. Um, we've got both Solar and ODT take advantage of RESTful interfaces, both as Solar's um, primary service and in ODT's curator service for keeping metadata up to date. Um, but really, the flexibility of the tools means that how you combine them, um, the strategies that you use, the two that I discussed today, or you know, any number of other ones, really depends on what you're trying to get out of it, what, how comfortable you are with the code bases, um, and what type of performance you're looking for. So a couple of things that we have in mind for making this easier, because now Solar and ODT have been sort of tied together on a number of different projects that I've been involved in and a number of projects that I've heard about. So this is apparently a compelling partnership. And so one of the things that we're talking about doing is replacing the um, metadata catalog in the file manager component. I mentioned earlier that you can swap these out for different things. Some people have used RDBMS. Currently, the default is Lucene. One of the next step plans is potentially to develop a solar-based catalog so that we can just sort of integrate some of this and remove some of the moving parts. The, the good side of that, right, the pro for that would be that there is fewer uh, moving parts. There's less that you'd have to construct. A potential con is just to keep in mind that perhaps doing so is more restrictive in the sense that the file manager's metadata catalog as sort of a bare bones ground truth catalog is one thing, and then you have the flexibility to build your solar index, to populate your solar schema, and build your solar index in any way that you like, or build two or three if you need to be able to support concurrent different formats of searching. And if solar catalog is your primary catalog, and you've set it up at the time of ingest to be queried or searched a certain way, do you have the flexibility to then change that when you need to? So it's, it's just a couple of things to think about, and this is a discussion that 
is just starting to form in the uh, ODT dev list. Um, the other possible um, enhancement is to take the method that was just described here and actually integrate that into the curator services either as some sort of switch that you can turn on where if you provide it a solar URL, it will also make the correct set of solar calls to update um, a solar index. Right now, the curator speaks only to the ODT file manager, but if there's a compelling way to combine these things that's not, um, it doesn't get rid of the gener generality of it, that's one thing we're looking at pursuing. Um, I said at the end I'd mention where you can learn more. Um, this is sort of the canonical entry points for information on either of the two projects. Um, especially in the case of ODT, I think it's fair to say that the wiki is a much more up-to-date source of information than the official website. The official website is, is good. It's excellent for getting a high-level picture. But if you want the latest development activity, um, definitely take a, take a look at the ODT wiki. So that's what I've got. A great presentation. Uh, what size of uh, index and data are you dealing with? Great question. Um, for the projects that I'm specifically involved in, we're not dealing with anything that anyone would call big data or even inconvenient data. Um, I think what we're dealing with is in the order of, in some cases, um, so some cases many tens to hundreds of gigabytes. But the radio, radio astronomy one, uh, it really depends. As far as what I'm indexing in solar, it's very small. But the upstream, of course, that's just a small representation of a much larger thing. And so the full scale uh, data there is in the many tens to hundreds of terabytes. But the index and the in information that comes across on a nightly basis is the extract, the information, the meta information. And so that's only about 100 megabytes or so a night. And then we index that information. Providing solar is one of the backend components. In my opinion, you know, we can discuss this. I don't think it would be restricted because if you think about it, uh, uh, the CAS catalog uh, underlying metadata model is key value pairs, right? And that's the same as solar. So, I, I mean, it, you really don't lose any semantics in storing into solar versus storing into like Lucene or relational databases we do right now. And I think that if you wanted to still, uh, so let's assume that your core metadata is stored in solar. In, in, it's ingested to the file manager, then it's store, stored in solar. Uh, you can still uh, you know, do anything you want with the metadata just as if it was in the current cascade. I mean, you, I think you can just, uh, you know, maybe have multiple solar instances or maybe modify, you know, whatever you can do right now, I think you would still be able to do it if you store it in solar. No, that's a great point, Luca. So. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. What I was trying to say wasn't, uh, what I was trying to say was that I think you need to be careful um, with the decisions you make because solar gives you a, a bit extra flexibility. So you're right that ODT is just key val, but solar gives you the ability to specify a lot of information about those vals yeah, in the true. sense that you can say that they're dates or you can say that they're things and you can copy vals, you can copy fields to other fields to create better search categories. If you want to search on someone's name, age, and place of birth, you can copy the name, age, and place of birth into another field. And those, def those decisions are generally made once at the time and actually, that, that's, a, that's a good point because if you think about it, in CAS, everything is a string. Right. In solar, you need to define the type, so we would need to think, take that into account. That's all I meant. I didn't yeah. mean that it's restrictive. I think right. perhaps I should have yeah. better said that you have to be more aware of what, what the possibilities yeah. are. Yeah. Quick comment on that, which is ODT 147. Luca, you can work on that. It's to make the, what you just said not true, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is to make the file manager type aware. Thanks. This might be a little bit off topic, but the solar web page talks about geospatial searches. Uh, you know, that's kind of a common topic of interest for the ODT 
community. Yeah. Have you done anything with solar and geospatial searches? It's a great point. I have not because the data that I've dealt with is either biomedical in nature or radio astronomy. Um, and so it's not directly applicable. Um, so I haven't had any direct experience with the, those index. Short comment on that. Some of the solar geospatial geohash stuff came out of us originally. I, I implemented that. And so that, that came out of uh, uh, use on the VODC project in, in ODT. And so, um, but the best way that I would recommend to do those types of things now, and we were talking about this uh, sort of earlier, but is um, thinking about ways to dump to dump the data out of ODT into things like GeoServer, which supports WMS and, and a lot of those things and using things like GDAL to dump that data, or Apache SIS, uh, Spatial Information Systems, which is a project that today is a Java implementation of a quad tree and supports point radius and bounding box level searches um, and is growing to support things like polygonal and to be like a generic spatial library for that. Any other questions? All right, thanks.